Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, we are looking at the Toro Jar, the Tier 9 Premium American Battleship that's been in, I think, in a crate or in a pack relatively recently. I don't know if it still is, because I'm currently on the press account. So, you know, I have it here. Georgia, this ship never existed, <laughs> to, to nobody's surprise. Uh, but uh, according to Wargaming, this was a this was a draft of the Iowa class. Now, when the Americans were designing the Iowas, they had one big fear, and that was that uh, Jap Japanese battle cruisers like Congos and similar things would be able to would be too fast. It would be able to um, you know wreak havoc on their cruisers. And as such, they wanted ships that had that had similar approaches to speed. Now, that meant they had to sacrifice something. This was already at the time when the escalator clause from the naval treaties was invoked because the Japanese didn't, well, didn't, uh, didn't adhere to it. And they could have uh, big guns. They could do 45,000 ton uh, tons of tonnage. That's where kind of the Iowa comes from. A little sacrifice in armor for speed uh, and yeah, for generally for speed. Now, the Georgia is based on the idea that the Americans in the initial stages of designing the Iowas were considering to use the 457 millimeter main guns instead of the 400, was it 406, 409s? Uh, anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, it's because of all these inches and things. <laughs> Nobody understands the calibers. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, the reason they actually in the end didn't use the bigger guns was that they found that the penetration itself wasn't that much more and they had to put a lot more weight onto these ships because uh, the well the gun barrels were thicker they were heavier and they wouldn't fit on the old barbettes so they had to design bigger barbettes uh, with which means more armor because these things tend to be extremely heavily armored so they ended up with um, just for the for the guns, uh, somewhere in the ballpark of 10,000 tons extra. And on a 45,000 tonnage limit, um, that well, produces certain amounts of problems. So they decided to stick with the uh, with the lower calibers. But um, not so much, not so much in here. We get to actually see the Georgia. So uh, how, how, do, how does this ship differ from the Iowa? Actually, uh, let's put a filter on. Give me a second. Okay, so we've got the three more or less Iowa class ships here, even though it actually says Georgia class because it's based on a design for the Iowa class, but um, they are pretty similar. So Iowa herself, um, and then we've got the Missouri, which has which has better uh, better hit points and better torpedo damage, at least well in this setup. And the Georgia is again pretty similar to Iowa herself in terms of both hit points and defenses. So this is really an Iowa hull that we're, we're dealing with here, at least from what we can see. In terms of maneuverability, the Georgia is actually the most maneuverable out of the, out of the three of them, with a 5.4 deg uh, degrees uh, traverse speed. And um, she also turns reasonably well on the rudder, although uh, I haven't set up the Iowa, so this doesn't completely count. Now here we come to the big difference, the guns. The Iowa gets the 406 millimeter, uh, millimeter main guns on a 22 second reload. The Missouri gets pretty much the same guns with a bit better range, otherwise they are completely identical. The Georgia gets the 457s. Now she only gets six of them because they are twin turrets, not triple turrets. So we have uh, two, two in the front, two super firing in the front and one in the rear. But, uh, well, they're 457s, so what's the difference? First of all, they reload slightly faster. This is something we've seen with the German ships as well, but smaller number of guns uh, often, gets a, um, often gets a reload buff just to compensate for the lack of uh, firepower otherwise. Uh, so to 22 seconds on the Iowa and on the Missouri, and we get 20 seconds on the Georgia. Range-wise, she's kind of between the two, at 15.6 kilometers. And the damage is somewhat higher. So we've got 2,300 on the main battery AP, uh, but only 1,900 on the 406s. 
and in on the HE the, the difference is even less. So it's 1156 versus 1298. So not, not a huge amount of difference on the HE. This is important, we get to that in a point. The turrets actually are slower to rotate because these are really super heavy turrets. And as I mentioned earlier, Bayanshi does get the 300% Citadel damage bonus, whereas uh, the Mo and the Georgia get the 5 degree turret traverse and only 250% Citadel damage. This means that these things can do an absolutely monstrous amount of Citadel damage, and that's pretty much also what they're for. In terms of secondaries, uh, 10, twin, 10 twin turrets all around the ship um, arranged, and they are your standard 127mm secondaries. The Missouri and the Georgia uh, and the Iowa get, uh, except for very small differences in, in description, they get, um, so these are the Mark 32s and these are Mark 38s. I haven't looked up what the actual differences are. Uh, probably negligible, but um, just they are slightly different guns. Uh, otherwise, these are the same secondaries. In terms of AA power, and again, we're looking at uh, Iowa and Missouri. Missouri actually comes out on top here with a small caliber of almost 500. And the Georgia is um, the weakest of the three when it comes to when it comes to AA firepower. It still means that um, she can defend herself to, to planes, but uh, she does have slightly weaker AA than the other two, which again is probably down to the fact that this is meant to be a pre-designed uh, pre ship, so pre-Iowa ship. Uh, concealment uh, 11, uh, with 12 kilometers is um, actually not terrible. It's the best uh, concealment of the three. Uh, this might be uh, this might be down to the camo though that I've slipped on, so I'm gonna have to check that. But it not, doesn't make a huge amount of difference. So main difference with this thing: uh, bigger guns, but fewer of them. <laughs> uh, in terms of ship skills, she does get the rapid reload one, three charges, the same as I think we had on the other two. Well, no, sorry, the, the Mo actually got the precise aiming and the radar, whereas the Iowa should be getting... Uh, yeah, so it's the same like on the Iowa, exactly same setup, just bigger guns. Now, equipment-wise, um, I haven't played the actual Iowa yet, because I haven't unlocked her yet, because I'm still in North Carolina, if you watch the uh, Road, to, uh, Road to Montana series, which is why I haven't played her yet in the press account, but... Uh, this thing gets set on fire all the time. So I had huge problems with being burned down. I basically, tier eight cruisers, tier, uh, tier eight light cruisers could burn me down in no time. Um, so the uh, the second slot goes to the deck protection mod. And even with that and the full fire prevention setup, I'm still occasionally struggling with fires on this thing. Uh, I'm not sure what it's what it's down to because the, uh, the actual fire and flooding resistance sounds really, really reasonable. But with um, you in tier 9, you're being faced by things like Worcesters and Seattles and um, Kutuzovs and Chapayevs and all these sort of things. So um, I, I had problems with fire. So uh, let's get let's get back to, to here. Yeah. So uh, deck protection mod 1 in the second slot. Um, I have steering in the third. And the first one is an interesting one. So I've, I've, I've tried a couple of different combinations. One big problem that she has is destroyers. So if you are, for example, in an Iowa, you have the triple guns on the front with the two turrets, and uh, they each do about 1,100 uh, damage. If you're in the Georgia, you only have four guns pointing forward, and they do about 1,300 damage, but um, it doesn't quite compensate. <laughs> so... Uh, because you actually also have to hit something. I have played around with um, so with secondary builds with the secondary reload mod, and um, j just to get you know be get better firepower against or better defense against destroyers. But uh, in the end, I've uh, I've decided to have to use the artillery plotting room, which is kind of a first for me. I've never really used that module before. Because it does give a, uh, a buff to the secondary battery firing range and to the main battery range. The main batteries are actually surprisingly uh, accurate for this large of a caliber. Uh, the, so the the um, precision, the dispersion mod is not actually super necessary, I find. Uh, also because this thing is so fast, and I usually uh, play her more aggressively on mid range, but she is uh, quite accurate at long range as well. 
And the mod, uh, the mod one would have been nice to get the turret rotation up to 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 notch because she does turn out her turrets very very easily. And oftentimes you have you're stuck and have to stop turning in order to let the turrets catch up to actually open fire, which costs you some precious seconds. But um, at the end of the day, this was kind of a good compromise for me because it does get the secondary range up to where we got uh, six point two eight kilometers, which means also that uh, for the elite bonus. I did not have to use uh, the gun director for range, but I could use the fire and flooding resistance. Which, yeah, is really an issue for me in this ship. So, uh, what have we got in the captain? Uh, I have put a 10 point captain into this ship, just because I wanted the, um, I wanted the master reloader. Otherwise, normally I try to align the captain level and the ship tier. But we've got no, no surprises in the first four. Um, fire, I, I am using fire supremacy for an additional rapid reload because on a seven minute battle I can use that. Uh, it's not strictly necessary. So you, you could use the survivalist and in after playing her for a while this might actually not be a bad choice because the armor is questionable on this ship. Um, probably just as on the actual Iowa. Uh, she cannot tank. Uh, in in if she gets under concentrated fire, definitely not. You get you get ripped to shreds in uh, if you face off even just against tier eight battleships, uh, and you you get focused by by two battleships, you get ripped uh, ripped to shreds if you're in the out in the open. So um, this might not be a bad uh, definitely not be a bad choice. Uh, I've just left it here because that's how I've been I've been recording. Just so you're not surprised. But um, if I if I was using this uh, this captain build uh, privately, I would probably um, I would probably consider survivalist actually instead of the fire supremacy. Uh, generalist over here, um, ex definitely extinguisher. Uh, I would have liked the adrenaline rush, but the uh, extinguisher is kind of a must have for me at this point. Um, I actually have the close quarters combat expert instead of the demo expert in tier 9 because, again, the problems I had against destroyers in this ship. She is maneuverable. And you can dodge torpedoes very nicely in the ship, but you do have trouble uh, getting the guns to track on destroyers in close range fights, and um, you don't have the you don't necessarily have the high explosive firepower because you just have uh, well you can't citadel them and you just have uh, six guns instead of nine. So th that um, that's something I've gone with, and the master reload obviously for the for the rapid reload skill. The um, historical camo, which I haven't been playing with, because again the ship comes out of um, out of a box like um, I think without the camo, uh, is very pretty to begin with. I mean, look at this; this looks very nice. Uh, she gives hit points, yes. Um, range and dispersion, sure, taken. And torpedo damage reduction, pff, okay, we'll take it. But um, uh, you're you're not you're quite maneuverable for a battleship that size. So uh, torpedoes have not been a huge issue for me in this ship. Maybe against airdrop torps that might be quite useful if you get under concentrated attack. But yeah, anyway, uh, that's the Georgia. So uh, let's uh, take a look at the battle. Now we are top tier here and we're playing Haunted Seas. There is no carrier and only a Kiev as a destroyer on the other side. So not a huge, dam uh, huge threat from torpedoes. The reason I've picked this battle is because it kind of demonstrates um, how careful you have to be with this ship in terms of positioning and tanking. Now we've got Izumo, North Carolina, Gascogne, Key, a Baltimore, Kutuzov, and a Kiev on the enemy team. And we're playing Haunted Seas, let's go. Uh, we do have two, de uh, two destroyers on our side and a couple of cruisers, so I'm really not afraid of Kiev. But... Um, I do have to watch out because even though I'm I'm, I'm top tier here, uh, the 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 armor is means that I have to be somewhat careful with how I'm positioning. So haunted seas, we're spawning over at A, which means I'm gonna rush towards A cup and uh, see what comes around the corner there. Uh, you have you do have to be a little bit careful with um, staying at the edge there, but this mountain in the middle really allows you to reposition and disengage if you need to. Because while uh, ships can lob over the edge, especially American light cruisers, uh, not, in the middle not so much. So you're rather safe in the center there. So it's a good place to disengage. So I'm just I'm just following the Xianyang here. 
Uh, look at the speed of this thing and, and how fast she gets up to speed. So she is definitely a very maneuverable ship and um, a pretty quick ship, which is something I like. Because uh, these guns, these guns are a bit trollish. So sometimes um, you you absolutely murder things, and sometimes you you get shots. You can shoot at Amagis at point blank, and they just don't they don't do anything. Okay, we spotted Izumo, and something else is in the cup. Um, there's the Gasconia, and the Kiev is up in is over in sea. So okay, let's open up at the French. The French, but and of course we immediately set on fire by the Kutuzov. So I'm not going to cut damage on that. Okay, two pens and a bounce and a semi pen. So at, at that range, the guns don't do a huge amount of um, a huge amount. You wouldn't usually get citadels at uh, 10 kilometers or over easily. Even if you're firing at cruisers, it's oftentimes not quite um, not quite as effective. So yeah, you know, then we get a, we get some decent full penetrations, and uh, these guns do an enormous amount of damage. So. Uh, it looks like the rest of our team has more or less buggered off towards the north. The Xianyang's dropped her torps, so uh, I'm trying to shoot the Kutus off there. Because he's kind of currently one of the bigger threats to me. And um, just backing up, going bow in, because there's still a North Carolina and there's an awful lot of firepower over there. So the Kutus off obviously starts shooting at me and of course sends me instantly on fire again. Um, still not damage conning that because I've got the Kutus off shooting at me. He's going reverse, so uh, I'm going to set second myself out. And what do we get? Full pens, but we don't get citadels necessarily. And there comes the north car. So at this point, double fire. Okay, I'm going to control it at this, uh, control it at this point, and I'm going to have to disengage here because uh, the Kutuzov is going to it's going to kill me. If I stay there, the Kutuzov and the the north car is going to immediately kill me. So I need to get out of range of that Kutuzov. Fortunately, this ship is very maneuverable again. So I can get into the middle, I can disengage, and I can I still have the range to actually do something about the North Carolina over there. So uh, I'm, I'm out of fire range of everybody, but I've, I've lost more than half my health very, very, very quickly. Nice so I do need to be a little bit more careful. But And we're only holding one cap so far, but um, I, I can repair and uh, keeping the fire up at the North Carolina. Again, at these ranges, not you're not necessarily going to um, to do a huge amount of, uh, of damage. This one overpen. Uh, now, the Xianyang is again is holding the the corner there, preventing them from looping around. And um, I'm going to have to help him there because again, he just dropped torps, so he's ki he's kind of out of it right now. And we don't have anything to tank up there, so I'm at I'm at about half health, uh, which means okay, Gascon, you seem to no, uh, it's not perma flooding, but. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get some flanking shots. Okay, can't hit Gasconia, but I can hit the key from here. And uh, nothing over there has torpedoes because the destroyer is still somewhere else. Uh, yep, again, two full pens, no citadel. I mean, you do re very reliable amounts of damage, but um, you only again have six guns. Uh, it's Baltimore. Baltimore's in the turn. So let's see if I can hit him a little bit. And they are really reasonably, um, reasonably precise. Uh, that's better. You see that five hits on a turning Baltimore at over 10 kilometers without the precision mod. So you um, you can really do a very reasonable amount of damage with these guns at range. And uh, let's see if we can finish off Baltimore before he goes undetected, because he was broadsiding just right there. Uh, okay, that's a couple more. Still no citadels. And uh, it looks like Gascogne is coming around the corner. I've got the rapid reload active, so I should have shells right, ready for him in a sec. Okay, there we go. That should be the end of the Gasconia. Baltimore is still out there. Um, okay, Gasconia down. And now, uh, now Xianyang can torp the Izumo, so I don't really need to worry about that one because we also have a Seattle coming along here. And um, how's it looking? We're holding two caps now. And the team has prevailed up up north at C cap. Oh, there's the Kutus off again. Okay, again, priority target. Uh, you really, really don't want to get HE spammed in this thing. I don't know what it is, but uh, I, I've just been burned down to no degree. Okay, that's better. Double Citadel. You see that 6,500 damage on a Citadel? <laughs> just, that one salvo just did like 15,000 damage or something. Uh, okay, with my extended uh, secondary range, can I actually... No, I, I still can't hit the Izumo from here. But that's okay. We've got three ships working with the Izumo and the rest uh, up north. But we are now outnumbering the enemy team. Baltimore is on almost no health. And Seattle actually takes down the Izumo. So with um, with the Seattle next to me, I don't have to worry about the Kiev. So I can um, I can pick up these guys up there. 
Okay, let's see if we can kill the Baltimore. Shots out, just with the front turrets. But she is quick enough that she can actually re relocate very... No, <laughs> no luck. She's quick enough that she can actually relocate very reliably um, or to the other end of the map, if necessary. Okay, Baltimore's gone undetected again, but the key over there needs to die. Oh, there's Balti, okay. Uh, and there's the Kiev still. So, is he, where's he going? Is he coming my way? All right, there's the big caliber and the kill on the key. Now Baltimore is uh, broadsiding from over there and probably hunting one of our destroyers. So, um, no, the Kiev is, is disengaging. So I'm just gonna get some shots out at the Baltimore. And then we we'll see if we can hunt that uh, that Kiev down still. Okay, that's the kill on the Baltimore. Back to the AG. Uh, how many? Oh, four. Okay, Kiev, you're my Kraken. Come here, <laughs> come here, you. <laughs> yeah, I know that one. Um, uh, well, my, my, my team, I, I mean, uh, this wasn't just on me. I've just, the last two I've, I've just taken out because they were there. Okay, come on, Kiev, fight, fight me. Come here. I want my Kraken. Now, of course, he sets me on fire again. I'm not damage conning that. Uh, where is he going? No, he's actually disengaging. And I can't lob that. Nope, not even with the secondaries. Oh, well, no Kraken for me then, I guess. Uh, because the Kiev run away. <laughs> But uh, yes, so that's kind of the Georgia in a nutshell. I've used all my three heals and I'm still on half health. Um, she does not tank very well. You do need to be very, very careful. You can't position yourself in the middle of a crossfire, like something you could do with, say, um, a German battleship or with a Colorado, uh, where you just bounce or semi pen or everything off. But um, she gets hurt very badly, even by tier eight battleships and she will melt like an American heavy cruiser. So uh, I, I don't know if that's if that's necessarily true for the um, for the Iowa as well. I suspect it is because it's the same the same base. But it just means that you have to be more more careful and actually use the speed and maneuverability to disengage if you're in an unfavorable unfavorable engagement, and uh, make sure that you are you know not fighting too many enemy ships at the same time because. Uh, she does have the ability to dish out monstrous amounts of damage with these citadels, and I have citadel Montanas in this thing easily. So uh, she does have the damage potential, but uh, she doesn't have the capability to tank, so just play her accordingly. Other than that, um, these big guns are, fine, are fun. It's my, f my first time to shoot anything that large. So um, <laughs> doing six, over 6,000 damage in a single single Citadel hit is pretty brutal, I can tell you that much. And uh, yeah, she has no problem do double Citadel in cruisers or um, other things. I have double Citadel Colorados in these things on at close range. So definitely doable. Anyway, um, yeah, that's the Georgia in a nutshell. Uh, fun ship, if you ask me. Uh, definitely somewhat unique. Biggest caliber in the American Battleship line so far. And... Um, now you know. So that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye.